welcome to another episode of Daily Hope. Today we are in Matthew chapter 14, and this is such a, this is a really bittersweet chapter because we see, we, we, um, we can understand what Jesus goes through, and yet he still has responsibility, and um, I'm, I'm really excited to talk about it, um, but it's, it's um, well, you'll see. But before we get started, please make, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to our channel, and hit that notification bell so you're notified every single time we post a video. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, that today we would understand, we would understand how great your love and your compassion is, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. So, in the beginning of this chapter, John the Baptist is beheaded. Now, I don't know if you've read it yet, but that's what happens. And, sorry, spoiler alert. But John the Baptist is beheaded because um, some manipulation happens, and, and John the Baptist, he ends up dying. And this is... This, this, is a, this is a sad day. It really is. Why? Because John the Baptist, he is the one who, who, who made the way. He prepared the way for the Lord. He baptized Jesus. Not only that, I don't know if you guys know this, but John the Baptist was Jesus' cousin. They were, they were related. And John the Baptist in this chapter, he, he dies. And we see Jesus' response. And it's very, to me, it's very humbling. It's very inspiring. It's very, um, how do I say it? It, it really pulled on my heart because, well, well let, let's read it, okay? So John the Baptist, um, he, he is, um, he's beheaded. Verse 12, And then his disciples came and took away the body and buried it and went and told Jesus. Verse 13, When Jesus heard it, he departed from there by boat to a deserted place by himself. Jesus, upon hearing the news that his cousin has been beheaded, his cousin who's, who, who was with him, you know, he, he, he baptized them, he declared, he's the one who declared that Jesus was uh, the Lamb of God who was slain for the sin of the world. He's the one who, who prepared the way for him. G- John the Baptist set up, so, um, many of John the Baptist's disciples became Jesus' disciples. And so John the Baptist really set up Jesus to, for Jesus to, not only come on the scene, but really hit the ground running. And Jesus, upon hearing that John the Baptist, his cousin, has, has died, Matthew writes, he departed from there by boat to a deserted place by himself. Jesus goes to a deserted place to be by himself. But what happens right after that? But when the multitudes heard it, they followed him on foot from the cities. The multitudes, too many people to count, they go and they follow, they go and they find Jesus in a time where, rightfully so, and every single one of us, we've been in this situation where we just want to be alone, whether it was, whether it was a bad day at work, or you lost a family member, or you lost a, even a pet, or, some, or, or maybe you feeling the betrayal of a friend. That 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 pain can really, um, that 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 pain can really cause us to just just want to be alone and want to be alone to you know to be alone even to be alone to pray, and and we see that Jesus went to the desert place by himself and the multitudes they find him. In verse fourteen. And when Jesus went out, he saw a great multitude, and he was moved with compassion for them and healed their sick. How amazing is it that our Jesus decided to say, you know what? Yes, this is a tough day, but my love, my compassion for the people is greater than what I'm going through. That takes, first of all, that takes a lot of strength. Yes, Jesus is God, but right here he was a 100% man as well. He, Jesus had a mind, he had a will, he had emotions. Jesus was going through something. There, there, there's no doubt about it. And yet, in, in, the mom, in that moment, Jesus doesn't say, Guys, like, go away. Like, I, I just lost my cousin. Like, can't you guys give me just a few moments of peace? That is not the God that we serve. Listen to me, church. That is not the God that we serve. We serve a God that no matter what's happening, he's moved with his love 
He's moved by compassion to love us and to heal us. That is who he is, because that's who he is in this moment. Jesus decides to lay down whatever it is he is going through to attend to those in need. And like I said, I think we can all relate to this. And, and you know what? And I, I, I haven't done this perfectly, but this speaks to me where, you know, if you had a bad day at work and you get home and your wife is happy to see you or your kids are excited to see you or your husband is excited to see you and, and, and you come and you are a party pooper maybe because you're like, I had a bad day at work. Don't talk to me. Right. That's not Jesus. Jesus doesn't have a bad day at work. And then he gives you the cold shoulder when he comes home. That's not who he is, right? Or maybe, or, or, or even, the, you know, if you lose someone and, and now, like, you know, and you just don't be around anyone and, you know, maybe there's people who want to be near you and you're like, no, get away from me. That's not the God that we serve, church. We, 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 we serve a gentle God who is lowly of heart, who, who loves us unconditionally. And, and, and here's the amazing thing about unconditional love that we don't talk about. We hear unconditional love, and, and, and we, always see it from, we always see it from the perspective of, of the one being loved. And here's what I mean by that. We know God loves us no matter what we do. We know God loves us no matter what we say or what we do or, or, or how bad we sin. Like, we will never, like, God will never not love us. His love is unconditional, right? And, 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 we, and we feel this way, you know, whether it's with our spouse or with our kids or with close friends, we're like, yeah, like, I, you know, I, I love this person no matter what. I, my, my love, in other words, my love and God's love is not conditional on the person receiving the love, right? That's what we think of with unconditional love. Right here, we see unconditional love from the opposite perspective. In other words, I'm going to love my wife no matter what she does, yes, but... I'm going to love my wife. Unconditional love is loving my wife no matter what I'm going through. Whatever day I had, whatever happens at work, whatever happens with family members, whatever, ha- whatever it is, I'm not, I- I'm not going to let circumstances change my love for my wife. In the same way, God, Jesus, doesn't let circumstances change his love for people. And, 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 and if, if anyone had the excuse, if there was ever a time for Jesus to turn someone away and say, hey, no, not right now, which Jesus never did that. You'll never find that in the Bible where Jesus says, nope, I don't got time for you right now. You, you don't see it in the Bible. And even in the midst of Jesus going through something, he, he, um, he doesn't do that. He doesn't turn them away. In fact, he does the complete opposite. He not only ministers to them, but he heals them. And they stay there so long that disciples are like, hey, like we're in the middle of nowhere. We got to send them home. And Jesus is like, no, let's feed them. That's pretty amazing. Jesus, Jesus, we serve a God who doesn't do the bare minimum. He doesn't say, okay, let me heal them. Let me, let me, let me preach a good word to them. And, oh, it's getting late. Okay, let's send them home. No, no, no. Jesus is like, nope, nope, nope. We, 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 we heal their sicknesses and diseases. We preach the good word. Now let's, let, let's eat. Let's fellowship. Let's hang out together. Let's feed them. He doesn't stop short. He doesn't. He doesn't shortchange them because of what he's going through. No, he, he loves us. He loves them to, to the fullest. Amen. This is the God that we serve. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, for your unconditional love that even in the midst of things that you are going through. You still love people unconditionally. And let us, God, love people unconditionally, no matter what we're going through. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to Daily Hope. So good to be back. Um, Tomorrow we will be in Matthew chapter 15. Matthew chapter 15 will be a really great chapter. But in the meantime, please make sure you check out those links in our description box. There's one if you want to be a generous donor to uh, Daily Hope. Thank you guys so much for your generosity. Also, our reading plans there so you can follow along as we go through the book of Matthew. And last but not least, what was your takeaway? What did you get out of this chapter? Put that in the comment section because those are so encouraging to me. And at Hope Community, people are our heart. Generosity is our opportunity. Excellence is our spirit. Smiling is our favorites. And Jesus is our Lord, we'll see you tomorrow from Matthew chapter 15.